Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. If you're new, my name is Becky and we are in my kitchen today. I am going on a girl's trip tomorrow and I'm responsible for tomorrow's dinner. So I thought, what should I make that I can make today so we don't have to bring all the ingredients and actually cook everything there? So we are gonna do a Mediterranean style dinner and I wanted something that we could do on the grill as well. So we are gonna do a, they're like Moroccan kebabs. That's what I call them, I'll show you. They're delicious and we're gonna grill those tomorrow at the beach. We also are gonna be making a really yummy carrot salad and I went out into the garden and harvested a ton of cilantro. We have chives under here, we have oregano and mint. I'm gonna wash these radishes up. We're gonna bring these as a side, just really simple fresh radishes with some hummus that I already have in the fridge. We are gonna make a tzatziki sauce to go along with this. We're going to cut a pineapple. This might be for breakfast or a side for dinner, I'm not really sure. And then we are gonna do rice and lentils with caramelized onions. This is one of my favorite dishes. It goes perfectly with the Moroccan kebabs and the carrot salad. I'm gonna put right here what the name of the lentil rice salad is because I will butcher that name. It, oh my gosh, you guys, if you've never made it, it's so good. So we're gonna make that. That is really good served warm or cold. So we're gonna make it today. I'll refrigerate it and then we'll probably warm it up tomorrow or we might eat it cold, I'm not sure. Last but not least, we are gonna make some blondie brownies. Now this is a new recipe to me I've never made before, but it is out of my absolutely 100% favorite cookbook. I will link it down below. It's the America's Test Kitchen Cooking School book. If you wanna learn the fundamentals of cooking, that is the cookbook for you. I don't cook a lot with recipes. I don't cook a lot with cookbooks, but I really do love that cookbook. It, when I got it, my sister gave it to me. I can't remember if it was a birthday gift or a wedding gift. I read it like a novel. It is a phenomenal cookbook. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're gonna do is start with the rice and lentil because those have to simmer. A couple of different things have to cook, different components for about 20 minutes. While that's cooking, we'll get going on the blondies. I have two pans here. This pan is where we're gonna start cooking the lentils. And what I'm gonna do is put one cup, let's see, of lentils right in our pot. These are nothing fancy. These are just lentils. I think these are called green lentils. They have the hole on them. And I'm gonna go wash these. So we have water covering our lentils. We're gonna turn this on. I'm gonna start with the stove on kind of a higher heat. Once this comes to a boil, we'll reduce it to a simmer and we're gonna simmer it for about 20 minutes. It's always best if you can wash your lentils because sometimes there can be some dust on them or you could find a rock or two. So I always like to take the time to look through them before I just go ahead and cook them. I just put a little over maybe about a third of a cup of oil in our pan. We are gonna caramelize these onions and they are gonna turn out so good. This ends up being a garnish that you put on top of the rice and lentils. I have four really large white onions. We are going to cut them thinly. When you're caramelizing onions, it's always best to cut them from pole to pole, which means you're cutting them from the top of the onion down to the root end of the onion. You don't wanna cut them perpendicular to the root end because what that does, it has to do with how the cells are organized in the onion themselves. And because you're caramelizing onions and you're having them cook for about 20 to 30 minutes, they can fall apart more easily if you cut them this way. I don't know the whole science about it. I just learned it on America's Test Kitchen and I trust America's Test Kitchen, so that's the way I do it. So we're gonna peel the onion and then slice them pole to pole. So I do try to cut my onions as thin as possible when I'm caramelizing them. It just helps that process go a little bit faster. Anytime I'm caramelizing onions, I like to add just a little bit of salt. That helps draw out the moisture in those onions and it's gonna help that caramelization process happen <coughs> that much faster. Even though this is not a fast process, this is a low and slow and loving process. This is one of my favorite, caramelized onions is one of my favorite things ever. Now that these are going, we've got our lentil simmering. I don't want it cooking any more than this, so I'm gonna turn the stove down. We're not looking to cook our lentils fully through because we're gonna cook them with the rice. Lentils take longer to cook than the rice does. That's why you have to do this pre-cook process. So I'm gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. I have my butter here that I melted for our blondie brownies. It says in the recipe to have it melted and then cooled. That's why I wanted to do this first because this is not warm, it's just melted. And I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. 
I'm going to link this cookbook. I don't feel comfortable writing this recipe down in the description box because it is their recipe, but I can tell you I have 12 tablespoons of butter in here melted. And to this, we're going to add one and a half cup of packed brown sugar. And it says to do this in a bowl, not in a stand mixer, because you will over mix it in a stand mixer. We're going to add two large eggs. A splash of vanilla one and a half cup of flour this recipe does have the measurements in grams or ounces I think so you could weigh out all these ingredients if you wanted to but I broke my scale so we are using just the standard cup measuring I know you do get more precise baking when you weigh it. One teaspoon of baking powder. Blondies are probably one of my favorite desserts and I was just thinking the problem with making blondies is I was gonna bring the entire nine by 13 baking dish to the beach but then Josh isn't gonna get me cause he's not going. And so I might have to cut it up and put it in a Ziploc bag so that my friends won't know that I saved some for Josh. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. The first time I ever ate blondies was when we were on vacation. We used to go to Shasta in California every year when I was maybe from like eighth grade through high school. We would run a houseboat and we had a boat and all we would do all day is swim, play games, go boating, play card games. We played a lot of card games. One time my mom made blondie brownies and it was life changing. And they're so easy to make, I should make them more. The reason I decided to make them today is because I thought a bar would be a lot easier to cook and prep instead of doing cookies. And they're basically kind of like a chocolate chip cookie in bar form. I'm gonna add one cup of chocolate chips and it does say you could add pecans or walnuts or anything like that, but I'm gonna leave those out. I'm just gonna add one cup of chocolate chips with no nuts in it. Okay, we have our batter. It said do not over mix. The recipe says to line your nine by 13 and then we're supposed to spray it. I was gonna skip this step because I was gonna bring this entire dish to the beach because I thought that that would be an easy way to transport it. Because I'm gonna save some for Josh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this step so I can pull it out and cut them into squares a little bit easier. I'm gonna spray my spatula a little bit so that it's not gonna stick as much to this cookie dough. And yes, I'm gonna lick this. This is a Danish dough whisk. I can link one of these if you want. This has been a game changer. This was a gift in my P.O. box, and I love, love, love it. I use it all the time. All right, cookie dough, or blondie brownie dough, into the nine by 13 baking dish. I just have such fond memories of eating blondie brownies while playing spades. After dinner, after a long day boating, just such a good time, good memories. It says to bake those for 22 to 25 minutes, so I'm gonna set a timer for 22 minutes. Look at me setting timers, it's not my strength. And then what we're gonna do now is let's get going on the tzatziki sauce because that is gonna be easy and we can check that off the list while we continue to wait for our rice and lentils. I was gonna make the tzatziki sauce, but we have only one more minute on our lentils and you can see how much they've plumped up. So I wanna give this a taste test and see how the texture is. I want it to be about halfway cooked because they have another 20 minutes when they cook with the rice. Oh, perfect, that's done. Okay, turn that off. We're gonna go strain it. We wanna get it out of this hot water so it stops cooking. And I'm gonna let it sit in the colander here. And I'll just put it back on there that, like that. And we're ready for this. This component of this dish is done. So we're gonna set this aside. These onions have a long way to go before they are caramelized. So now we're gonna get going on the salad, the carrot salad and the tzatziki. First thing we're gonna do is open our Greek yogurt and put it into the dish we're going to bring to the beach with us. I almost forgot we need a little bit of olive oil, so I'm gonna go with that next. I'm just gonna put 
two tablespoons of olive oil in there. I have a cucumber here and it is washed. No need to peel it. The green adds a nice color. Cut it in half and we're gonna use a box grater to grate that up. I fell in love with tzatziki sauce when I was part of a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. And we would get a lot of cucumbers in the summer because that's in season. And cucumbers, Josh and I enjoy, but we do not love. It's not our favorite summer vegetable. And so I found this sauce to be so incredible and it's a great way to use up a lot of cucumbers. And so now we've just fallen in love and we absolutely love it. And it goes perfect with this meal that we're making today. I have one lemon. I'm gonna go ahead and zest it using a microplane. This is gonna get all the essential oils out of this lemon. You're gonna get the lemon flavor from this, but not the tartness of the lemon. I then will cut it in half and we will use a lemon juicer and we're gonna juice this lemon into our sauce. Here I have some baby dill. This is fresh dill. This is one of my favorite herbs. I'm gonna cut just the fronds off. And then I'm gonna take fresh mint and we're gonna chop all of this up together. And this goes right into our sauce. The last ingredients we're gonna add are some garlic. This is homegrown freeze-dried garlic and some salt. And then we're gonna mix this up. If that doesn't look stunning, I don't know what does. I am so excited to have this. This tastes like summer to me. You can add really whatever type of herbs you want into this. I really like to add the mint because it adds a level of sweetness and the dill, you know, dill and cucumbers just go so well together. That's a marriage made in heaven or a match made in heaven or however that saying goes. So we're gonna stir this together and then I wanna give it a taste test. I wanna know if it needs any more lemon juice, salt. I could add more herbs if we need to. I have plenty of them. We're gonna add a little bit more salt. It needs more garlic. And I think it needs a little more lemon. This is a perfect thing to make in advance. It sits in the refrigerator really well. It actually gets better in the fridge. So I'm gonna give it another taste test. I think we may have done it. That was perfect. I just needed that little bit of salt and a little bit more lemon. I haven't made that in a long time. I forgot how much I like it. I'm gonna put the lid on this and this is now ready to go to the beach with us. We officially have one of the four components done. This is where we're at with these onions. So they still have probably 20 minutes or so. This is a slow process, labor of love, but it's so worth it. I did check on the brownies and they are not done. I figured we could get going on the meatballs. So I have oats here because I normally use breadcrumbs for this recipe, but I don't have breadcrumbs, but I have oats and you can always substitute oats for breadcrumbs and things like meatloaf or meatballs or whatever it might be, especially if you're gluten-free, that's a great option. I put one cup of oats in there because that's how many we would need if we were using breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna put the lid on it and we're gonna blend this up. I'm not looking to turn this into powder. I want it just like a coarse grind. You probably could use quick oats if you wanted instead of doing this process, but I don't ever have quick oats on hand. I think that might be good, let's see. That looks about perfect to me. I'm one and a half in this recipe, so I have three pounds of ground beef in here. This is my ButcherBox organic grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef. And if you're interested in ButcherBox, I can link them down in the description box. They do all humanely raised animals. They do organic chicken, which I love their chicken. Wild-caught salmon. Their salmon's really good. I'm not a huge salmon eater, and their salmon is not fishy at all. And grass-fed, grass-finished beef and cage-free pork. And if you become a member, the life of your membership, if you shop through my link, you get two pounds of grass-fed, grass-finished beef free for the life of your membership. And I have to tell you the quality I've been super happy with. So in here, we're gonna add our oats to our beef and I can show you that is what our oats look like. So pretty, pretty ground, some are a little bit finer ground than that. It's about one cup of oats. We're gonna add some cinnamon, quite a bit of garlic, cumin, coriander, red pepper flakes, salt, four eggs. Before we finish these meatballs, I think our brownies are done or our blondies. They're golden brown around the outside and they're still a little bit soft on the inside. I don't wanna overcook these, but I don't wanna undercook them 
but I think we're gonna call it. This took about 34 minutes in my oven. I think my oven runs pretty cool. So we're gonna set those aside and let those cool. We do need to prep some more herbs. I have mint here, cilantro, fresh oregano. Oregano can be pretty powerful, so I'm not gonna add too much of that. And chives. We'll put half the chives in the meatballs and half the chives will be for the carrot salad. I'm chopping the stems of the cilantro and everything because this cilantro is homegrown and it's super, super tender. So it can, it's not gonna be tough or anything in the meatball. It's just gonna add really yummy, delicious flavor. The first time I ever added mint and cinnamon to meat, I was like, this is, doesn't seem right. But let me tell you, it is pretty incredible. Like I said earlier, the mint adds just this level of sweetness and so does the cinnamon, but the cinnamon also adds a warmth that you don't get when you don't add it. And I absolutely love it. I think we need a little bit more herbs than that. That doesn't look like quite enough to me. So we're gonna double this amount of herbs to go into our Moroccan kebab. Really, they're supposed to be kebabs, but I'm gonna form, I'll show you how we're gonna form them into little patties. I doubled our herbs in here and I'm going to keep all these spices out because we're gonna use all of these in the rice and lentil dish. The easiest way to get in here is just to get in with my hands and mix it up, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll bring you back when we form them into patties. I'm trying to think through what is the easiest way for me to transport this in the cooler from here to the beach. Should I shape these patties now or should I shape them when we get there? Should I just put this in a Ziploc bag and transport it that way? Are they gonna get misshapen if I shape them now? Hmm. I have to think about that one for a second. I've decided I'm gonna shape them when we get to the beach. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get there, but I'll also show you right now how these are gonna be shaped when we put them on the grill. So I'm gonna open my Ziploc bag and turn it inside out a little bit so it will be a little bit easier to get this meat in there. But let me show you how we're gonna shape this. So I'm gonna take a good size amount and I like to make them into kind of an oval shaped hamburger patty style. So they're kind of like oblong and I don't want them round like a hamburger or round like a meatball. So that's the shape we're going for, something about like that. So I do think though that this, if I had, you know, however many 15 or whatever that it will come out of this, I think those will get misshapen in transport. Let me try that. Maybe I'm changing my mind again. You know what, maybe we can shape them right now. We're gonna go ahead and shape them and put them one layer thick in this Ziploc bag. These meatballs freeze beautifully. If I was thinking what I should have done, because this honestly is one of my favorite meals, and it's not hard, the onions take a while, but you can prep everything else while the onions are cooking. I should have thawed twice as much meat and doubled or tripled this recipe so I could freeze the rest because these freeze and cook up beautifully and they're so good, especially in summer. This is one of my favorite summer meals. We got 13 patties. I'm gonna put these in the fridge so they cool down and kind of harden up a little bit. And I think this is gonna travel really well in a cooler. So what do we need to do next? The salad. And our onions are still caramelizing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these into about two inch chunks. Now I'm gonna put these carrots in a Ziploc bag and I'm gonna transport them this way because I'm sure they have a bowl at the Airbnb that we're staying in. I think this should be plenty of carrots for a really nice carrot salad with all the sides and everything we're having. I think. This will be more than enough. Perfect. What I'm gonna do for this carrot salad is I'm gonna de-stem everything. The cilantro, I don't need to de-stem because we will go ahead and eat that. The dill, I'm gonna take off the stems. I'm gonna pile all of this up in a pile here. Along, I'm not gonna put the fresh oregano. I think that'll be a little bit too strong in this salad, but we will put some mint so we're gonna go ahead and get these off the stem. 
and we have our chives. All of these herbs I'm going to throw in this Ziploc bag and I'm going to put one more thing in here with them. I'm going to wrap a paper towel around them. Just like that. I'm going to stick this bag of herbs in with our carrots. I have found that wrapping fresh herbs in a paper towel and then putting them in the bag is the best way to get really long-term storage of them. Well, long-term, I say a week and a half or two weeks in your fridge. Obviously, this is going to be made up tomorrow, so I don't need to worry about that. I don't want to chop all these herbs because they will turn brown. They'll oxidize if I mix them in here without putting the dressing on it. I don't want to put the dressing on this salad yet. We're going to make the dressing right now, but I'm going to transport the components separately so that tomorrow we can go ahead and make this salad. This is one of those salads that does taste really good the next day, two days, three days, four days after. But because I'm making this for people, I want it to be fresh. So we're going to stick this in the fridge and we're going to make the dressing. I'll chop up all those herbs when we get there. I'm assuming the Airbnb has a knife and a bowl. So let's make the dressing. We're gonna make a really simple, delicious vinaigrette. I'm gonna zest two lemons into our mason jar and this is what we're gonna make our dressing and transport our dressing in. You wanna avoid trying to get into the white part so you still want it to be a little bit yellow where you've zested. The white part is what is bitter. Now I'm gonna juice these two lemons into our jar. To this, we're gonna add some of the same spices that are in the rest of the dishes. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of coriander, some cumin, garlic, some honey. I don't wanna to put too much honey because carrots are sweet, but I do wanna balance out the acid from the lemons. And now I'm gonna add the olive oil for one part of our lemon juice. We're gonna add two parts of oil. Now we shake this up, we give it a taste test and we see if we need to adjust any of the seasonings or spices. I just made this dressing up on the fly. So it may need a little bit of an adjustment. This is probably more dressing than we're gonna need for the carrot salad, but whatever we don't use, I'll just bring home and we'll eat it at some other date with salad or something. Mmm. That is good, but it needs a little bit more flavor. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of white wine vinegar because it needs a little bit more of a punch. I think I put too much olive oil in there maybe. I'm going to add a little bit more salt and a little bit more garlic. This is how I cook generally. I usually just cook by tasting, adjusting, tasting, adjusting. Sometimes it's a winner, sometimes it's not. I'm gonna go through every single utensil I have today, giving everything a try. Okay, let's give this a try. Mmm, delicious. Okay, that's perfect. Now I'm gonna clean up my mess. I have accumulated one, and our onions are getting very close to being ready for the next step. I want them a little bit darker than this. While we wait for our onions, we are going to prep some of the sides that we're going to be bringing. The first one are these fresh, beautiful radishes from the garden. Radishes are one of the easiest things to grow. So if you don't have any sort of things growing at all, start with radishes. They take about 28 days from seed to harvest and they're just a delicious snack. Those greens from the radishes, those will be going to the chickens. You can't eat them, but they're not my favorite. Now we're gonna get this pineapple cut up. I actually bought this pineapple because I wanted to make pineapple salsa, but I never got to it and I don't want it to go to waste. It was very ripe, it was a delicious pineapple. And if I waited till after we got back from the beach, I just couldn't see us being able to eat it in time before it went bad. So I thought this would be a perfect snack to bring for a side for dinner or for an easy breakfast. And now we got all that prepped and ready to take with us. This is ready to go. So let me show you what we're gonna do next. Now we are going to remove half of these onions or a little bit more. I'm going to do probably three fourths the onions and we're gonna use these as a garnish to put on top of this dish when it's all said and done. So I'm gonna to try to leave most of the oil that's in the pan in the pan. And then the rest of the onions are going to be just added to the rice and lentils. So I'm gonna strain out some of that oil so this is for garnish. I'm gonna let this cool before we put the lid on and put it in the fridge. 
Now we have our onions and our oil left. We are gonna add three quarters of a cup of rice. We're gonna toast this rice until it browns, but we're also gonna add our spices right now so those can toast as well. That's some cinnamon, coriander, or that was cumin, this is coriander, red pepper flake, and salt. If you're wondering why there's no black pepper going in any of the dishes today, that's because I broke my black pepper container and it got glass in it. So I don't have any black pepper right now and I didn't feel like running to the store just to get that for today. So everything's just not gonna have black pepper, which is fine. Once this is toasted, we are gonna add our lentils and then our last few ingredients. Now we're gonna add our lentils, our par-cooked lentils. And we're gonna stir that in with all the spices and onions. I wanna kinda of fold this in there. I don't wanna smash the lentils because they are par-cooked. They are a little bit more tender. Once you think everything is evenly mixed, we're gonna add three cups of water. And I've spilled water on my stove. So it's loud. We're gonna have this come up to a boil. We're gonna reduce it down to a simmer and then I'm gonna put the lid on it and then we'll let it cook for about 20 minutes. Look at this, yum. Okay, we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna try to take it off this foil. I don't really like the foil. I would probably have used parchment paper. Oh, but it's so sticky and yummy looking. Oh. We did get a little bit of stickage there. I think I would use parchment paper next time, not foil. Okay, we're gonna cut these into serving sizes. I think I know my problem is that I underbaked it a little bit. So these ones and the outside edge ones are perfect. So those are gonna go with us. This and this is gonna be for Josh and he is not gonna complain that it is really ooey gooey because it still tastes absolutely delicious. These, I think I'm gonna use the same nine by 13 we used and I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper down and we'll just stick these in here and then I'll put a piece of saran wrap over it what I've done to make sure the rice doesn't get soggy is I put a towel underneath the lid and then I go like this. The stove is on really, really low. So if you had a gas or a propane or something stove, I'd be very careful with this. But I put that on there and I just let it simmer and that way the condensation can go on top of the towel. We need to taste the rice so you can see Everything's looking really cooked and beautiful. There's rice, lentils, the rice and the lentils are individual. I probably could have done a little bit more rice. Overall, it looks fantastic. We're gonna give it a try. Make sure that the rice and everything's done. Make sure it's seasoned well. And then I'm gonna turn this off the heat because I think, I think it's done. I'm gonna leave the lid off so it can continue to steam and it doesn't cook anymore. Perfect. Perfect. It's got a warm heat to it. It's full of flavor. Absolutely delicious. That was super productive afternoon. We got all of it done. We got the main, the meatballs done. We got our kebabs, whatever you want to call them. We got two sides, the salad, the rice and lentils. We got a sauce, our dessert, some fruit, and I'm also gonna bring a breakfast casserole a couple days ago, I made a breakfast casserole for Josh and I, and I made two, one I put in the freezer, and I thought, you know what, I think I'm gonna bring that, because then we could just pop that in the oven one morning with the pineapple, and then we have breakfast. Easy peasy, we don't have to worry about going out to eat that morning if we don't want to, and if we don't use it, use it no worries at all. I am gonna show you what all of this looks like pulled together, because we still obviously have to cook the kebabs, and we have to assemble the salad and everything like that. And right now what I need to do is I'm gonna let this cool and then I'm gonna package this up and I need to go clean my car out, I need to pack and Josh is gonna be working on this house a ton this weekend 
and he is going to be busy, 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 busy. And so I'm going to go run and I think I'm going to go get him a couple snacks, a couple just treat things that I don't normally buy because I'm not going to be here. So he'll have some convenience foods. He will have those um, underdone blondies, which he will certainly enjoy. But sometimes when I'm gone and he's here, I like to just give him a couple of treats that I don't normally buy or he doesn't normally buy for himself. I have other videos I can post right here. You can go enjoy those between now and my next upload. And don't forget to check out the description box because I will leave the recipes down there and butcher box if you're interested in butcher box. I want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friends.